Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. Gibson, arguably the most iconic guitar company in the world and almost definitely the most talked about. For 2019, under new management, they've done a complete relaunch of their lineup, splitting it into the original and modern collections. At the top of the original collection is the Les Paul Standard offered in three variants, each based on the most iconic and desirable instruments at different points of Gibson's legacy. There's the 50s, the 50s with P90s, and this, the 60s. The look and specs of the 60s spoke to me the most, and that's why I've chosen to review it first. Now recently in a move that has to be said is classic Gibson, they released this strange, ranty, weirdly aggressive video which, to oversimplify, was partially about them being the original, and pretty much all others being counterfeits. So if you've got $2,800 for a Les Paul, should you play authentic or not? Let's take a closer look. First off, I want to thank Postmates for sponsoring this video. These review videos take a ton of hours to put together and the sponsors allow me to dedicate that time to create this honest content. I also go out of my way to make sure the sponsors are something I actually use and love before I recommend anything. You've probably heard of Postmates before, and if not, you are missing out. They're kind of like Uber, but for deliveries. Whether you want food from a restaurant that doesn't deliver, groceries, pet supplies, adult beverages, Postmates will deliver it for you. When I crashed into the sidewalk, I got a concussion, wasn't allowed to drive, Postmates was the single-handed reason I survived the week. I got everything delivered and it was awesome. And I still use it because it's super convenient, saves me a ton of time. Plus they have these delivery parties for trending restaurants where you pay nothing for delivery. I've been trying a ton of new food from my area because well, when I get hungry, free delivery, it's awesome. So if you wanna try it out, see why so many people are using it, download link is in the description. Make sure to use the code Agafish for $10 off your first order. And now let's talk about this authentic Les Paul. Actually, just real quick, Future Hunter and a voiceover here. For some reason, when I was writing and recording the review, I thought that the price was 2,800 instead of 2,500. The points are still the same, but you're gonna hear me say the wrong number a few times, so uh, my bad. Anyways, into the review. Now reviewing a Gibson guitar so soon after they 
for some reason decided to undo a lot of the goodwill they built over the last six months is risky biscuits. But hopefully the internet can calm its rage long enough to give this guitar a chance, because it is a really nice instrument. Now each of the new standards have slightly different specs. The 60s, as the name would suggest, is modeled after the Les Paul standards that Gibson produced in the decade of free love and psychedelics. We've got a non-weight relieved mahogany body, a set slim taper mahogany neck, and a 22 fret rosewood fingerboard with trapezoid inlays. I mean, pretty standard stuff, pun intended. It looks fantastic in my opinion. The standard 60s currently comes in three finishes. You've got unburst, bourbon burst, and this iced tea. The top is a double A figured maple cap, not a regular maple cap with a veneer or anything like that that you'll find on most affordable import models. And the job they've done with the finish, I mean, it just looks incredible in person. The way Gibson have managed to do it make the colors just pop in the light. Because it's a proper figured maple cap, it also means that each one is unique, and that individuality gives each one its own unique character. Always a fan of that. In fact, this one has a really interesting top. It's kind of got like a, I don't know birthmark by the tailpiece. At least I think it looks cool. The Gibson logo seems to be mother of pearl. It's really colorful in the sun, looks great. The neck binding is pretty cool. I don't know many other manufacturers that still do this, but the binding has fret nibs instead of just being flush with the fingerboard. It serves absolutely no practical purpose, but it does look kick-ass. That does make it more complicated to refret though, which might be an issue with this guitar later down the line. For the lineup relaunch, Gibson has gone back to traditional fret specs. That means no more cryogenic fret treatment to lengthen the life of the frets, which was a decision apparently made based off of community feedback. Gibson hasn't really shared specifically what feedback they used to make this decision. Maybe it was something like Gibson fans wanted standards to have less ridiculous price tags and cryogenic frets didn't rank high on the priority list. Gotta be honest, that's a very disappointing change for me. I was very much on board with the cryogenic treatment since, in theory, the frets would feel just as nice as the day you bought the guitar 10, even 20 years later. Especially since the frets that Gibson uses are relatively small, you're definitely gonna have to refret this guitar at some point in the future if it gets regular playing time. I'll talk more about those in a bit. Rounding out the 60s aesthetics, the control knobs are gold top hats with silver reflectors, and they've even included the little metal indicators. Not gonna lie, the knobs are a big part of why I think this guitar looks better than the 50s. I don't know, it's just one of those things. For $2,800, you'd expect the build quality and craftsmanship to be excellent and it really is. Like all Gibsons, it's built right here in the USA. Now, even though the body has no weight relief, Gibson has used high quality woods, so it's not a boat anchor. It's not a light guitar either, but nine-ish pounds is manageable as far as Les Pauls go. Basically, I just took a whole lot of time to explain that this $2,800 guitar doesn't feel like a flimsy toy. You're welcome, subscribe for more quality content. Now, the frets are listed on the spec sheet as medium jumbo, but I'll be honest, there's very little jumbo about them. Like I found on the special DC, they feel really small, they feel really low and narrow. There's nothing wrong with that if you like it, but if you think you're getting large frets because of the size name, you're just not. Even Epiphone medium jumbo frets are much taller and wider, which I prefer and I was hoping for on the Gibson, and it's interesting they're not consistent across the two brands. Either way, for a traditionally spec guitar, the standard 60s feels like quite a quick player, even with the giant blocky neck joint, thanks the slim taper neck. It also helps that the gloss finish is nitro instead of the poly found on most import guitars, so it's much less sticky. For better or worse, it does have the big, blocky, traditional set neck joint. I'm a rhythm player. I like my traditional Les Pauls. It doesn't bother me. I'm used to it. A modern shred guitar, this is definitely not but it's not supposed to be either. For hardware, we've got the usual suspects. We've got the Gibson Tunomatic Bridge and Stop Bar Tailpiece. We've got the classic Grover Rotomatic Tuners with kidney buttons. I mean, the Gibson headstock with Grover Tuners. It's like beer and pizza. It's just a natural fit. There's also a Graftech Nut, which I've been told is the same material as last year's Tectoid. It's just a branding change. I love Graftech Nuts. I generally have zero tuning stability issues when Graftech is involved. For your money, the standard 60s comes with a form-fitting hard case. I've always been a fan of the Gibson hard cases. It's a classy color, the interior plush is high quality, and the protection is solid. It's also not one of those super huge rectangular cases, so it's easier to carry around and fit into smaller cars. You know, I wish it came with strap locks though. For $2,800, I think it's a bit ridiculous that it only comes with regular strap buttons when even Epiphone includes strap locks on their like $600 guitars. It can't add that much to the cost and would go a long way in protecting your investment. 
The sound of the Les Paul Standard 60s is powered by two Gibson burst buckers, a 61T in the bridge, and a 61R in the neck. They're hand wired with orange drop capacitors. And here is what they sound like through the Marshall. <laughs> Now, I'm usually not a fan of burst buckers. The one and two tend to be kind of meh for my liking. They're not bad pickups, they're just not great for the copious amounts of gains that I run everything through. They're kind of finicky and I could never get what I wanted out of them, like they're always either too thin or too muddy for what I need. Now at first, I thought these were the same. Plugged it in, threw that pickup selector down to the treble position, and just mud city. It almost had this half-cocked wah sound as well, and if you're watching the tone comparison closely, you may have noticed what I'm getting at here. I don't know whether it was wired up wrong or fastened in upside down, but the switch is backwards. I mean, it's an easy fix, but come on, Gibson. It's a $2,800 guitar. Why is the customer doing your QC? On the plus side, the pickup set actually sounds quite decent. It's been a while and I don't have a burst bucker equipped guitar with me to do a direct comparison, but if I recall correctly, they sound burst buckery, but with more balls. I wouldn't necessarily recommend them for metal, but for rock, they've got you covered. And if you disliked the PCB wiring, you'll be happy to know that that has been ditched and we're back to a traditional harness and hand soldered setup. Now while the non-gearhead might not notice any difference, it's great if you plan on doing any modifications or if any of the components fail. In last year's version, the entire PCB would have to be replaced. Now that it's modular, you can mix and match to your heart's content. So, is the Gibson Les Paul Standard 60s an excellent guitar? Yes, absolutely. What makes the Standard 60s great is that it's exactly what Gibson fans have been asking for. It's a high quality Les Paul with 60 style specs. No more, no less, and at a much more attainable price point than last year's $3,700 standard. While the Les Paul Modern comes with an asymmetrical neck profile, a compound fingerboard radius, a wiring scheme that allows for coil splits, and a contoured neck heel, this sticks to what makes a Les Paul a Les Paul. In terms of QC though, Gibson still needs to step it up. A backward switch isn't a major disaster, but it's not something that I expect to even slip through on a $300 Harley Benton anymore, let alone a $2,800 US-made Gibson. Given recent events, Gibson has put additional pressure on themselves for consistency and, well, yeah, speaks for itself. So if I had $2,800 to spend on a Les Paul right now and didn't already have a Gibson, would I buy this one? Well, I definitely want one with a nitro finish, but to be honest with you, I'd probably pick up one of last year's standards while they're still in stock. Since the launch of the new lineup, they're being blown out by all the major retailers. For the same price, you're getting a triple A flame maple top, locking tuners, a stupid amount of tonal options with four push pull pots, cryogenically treated frets, and of course, that ridiculously cool blueberry burst finish. Plus, for you lefties, all the new models are only available in right-handed right now. With this one, it's not the greatest bang for your buck, the pickups aren't the greatest for what I play, and yet, I love it. As a Les Paul fan, I can't help but really 
love it, despite the design that objectively doesn't make sense in 2019, like the headstock angle and the big boxy neck joint. But then it's got the vanilla smelling nitro finish, hand-wired electronics, and it's just super fun to play. There's something about a well-made Gibson. It's like perfect imperfection and it's exactly what fans have been asking for. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. These are of course just my opinions and I'd love to hear yours, so leave them in the comments and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Also hit that notification bell, that way YouTube might let you know when I upload a new video. Thanks to Sam Ash for making this guitar available, to Luke for mixing everything, and the amazing patrons for supporting what I do. Social media and merch links are down below. As always, thanks so much for watching, you've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.